Okay. So, I'll be bouncing around between characters, because obviously my main goal is not necessarily to teach you how to fight right, but just to have to play right neutral in general. So understanding how that applies to matchups is an important thing. Okay. Alrighty, we can hop into it. Ready? <laughs> Don't see that very often. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we definitely have some stuff we can talk about. The, um, how strong is your understanding of frame data? Um, I just went over it this morning, so... Okay. Usually not that good, but now, gotcha. now it's a little bit um, Have you seen this the website, ultimateframedata.com? Yeah. Okay, great. This is That site is wonderful. I've referenced that site literally every single lesson I do ever. Not an exaggeration. Yep. <laughs> so, definitely good the stuff. Is that, like, mm -hmm. like, even though I'm main Chrome and, mm -hmm. like, uh, co-main Roy, like, I've played a lot of characters and I have a tendency of forgetting frame data after... Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Like a few okay. weeks, and I have to review it. Yeah, that, that's that's totally normal. The um, oh, I mean, gosh. like again, like I said, 
I, I'm not exaggerating when I say I reference Ultimate Frame Data literally every session I do, and that there's a reason why I still go back to it, just because you know it's, it's a lot of numbers, it's a lot of stuff that's like not exactly easy to memorize by heart. Um, yeah. So it's more important to put it. In, I, I find it's easier to categorize things in terms of like, you know, you can look at yeah. um, the frame data of a move and say, okay, this move is safe, or this move is like unsafe, or this move is really unsafe, or this move is fast, or this move is slow, etc. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. The frame data, like the numbers themselves, become really important whenever we start talking about how fast out of shield options are. Um, right. Knowing what exactly is punishable, how fast um, various options are, is really, really important really because the difference of two frames can, you know, make the difference between whether or not something is a punish and whenever something isn't a punish. If you try to punish with something, like if we try to up B something as Roy out of shield, it's not actually up B punishable and it gets shielded, that can just be our stock, right? We could just die off of that. Mm -hmm. So it's really yeah. important to get it like a baseline of like what where those numbers exactly are at. Um, and understanding the frame data of your opponents so that you can get an idea of like what you can challenge, what you can't what is like safe pressure from your opponent and when it's like your turn to try to make like an aggressive move, right? Um, mm -hmm. For a move like Lucina Forward Tilt, like Lucina Forward Tilt is minus 15 on shield, which on paper mm -hmm. is pretty unsafe, but usually it's mm -hmm. gonna be spaced pretty far away, right? Mm -hmm. So it'll be your turn to try to do something, but more than likely you won't be able to like actively hurt, hit her from it unless you have a really far reaching out of shield option or unless she's spaced it poorly. So mm -hmm. understanding that that's your turn to like set something up afterwards, and to like mm -hmm. try to do something safe, what would that be like uh, like setting up for falling forward air or like calling out a shield with like a dash grab or like poking with down tilt or something like that um, versus like try to punishing, like immediately punishing it is an important distinction. And especially also for like, but especially, especially important for like whenever it's not your turn. So like Lucina neutral air is minus four on shield, which is extraordinarily safe, right? And like Lucina down air is like minus nine on shield, which is kind of unsafe, but not super unsafe. So like yeah. in there, there was an interaction there in that game where like I down aired your shield and you tried to drop shield forward smash. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't necessarily like the idea there of like taking your turn after I down air your shield is a good one because like I am slightly negative, but I'm not super negative. And if you mm -hmm. miss with forward smash, then I can punish with whatever I want. Right. Because right forward smash is really committal. Um, so understanding when you can take your turn, like taking your turn there is a good idea, but you would want to like set up for something safer, right? Because there's no guarantee that F smash is going to hit. And if it doesn't hit, then I get to hit you for free. Um, so understanding that whenever moves are like in that gray area is really important because again, that's when you can start like setting up for yourself. Um, right. So do you know how to, no, sorry, go on. Sorry. <laughs> no, no right. problem. So the way that I've always memorized frame data, I'm, I don't know if it's Wrong because in the past when I was trying to like cram a lot of frame data in, mm -hmm. I memorized moves as in fast, super fast, slow, and whatever. And I kind of have a range. For example, Roy Forward Smash being mm -hmm. like range eleven to fourteen, mm -hmm. which, based on what you said right now, it's actually two frames make a difference. So it's probably the wrong way to do it. Yeah, it the in general categorizing thing that way is like uh, a good idea, and I do like recommend thinking about it in general as that way. Um, right. You want to be a little bit more specific with your out of shield options because out of shield right. options are really tight. Um, right. Like they literally like the, the Palutena Ford air got changed in this recent patch from minus three to minus five, and people are complaining about it. Right. And it's like it's two numbers right. literally. <laughs> yeah. um, so for for those numbers, it's important because you want to understand exactly what you can punish with what. Um, the easiest way to think about that um in in my head and that this, this seems to be the case for most other people as well is to think about like what your fastest out of shield options are what your like mm -hmm. mid speed out of shield options are and what are your like what are your hard punishes right okay um so like roy up b and right neutral air well actually i guess but before we go into that do, do you know how to calculate how fast your out of shield options are uh calculate yes because it is not always straightforward I'm kind of a little bit lost by that. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Uh, and that, like again, I'm like whenever I ask these questions, it is 100% okay to say that you don't know the answer to them. I'm not asking them to. I probably just don't understand yeah. the question. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So, so an important thing to understand about Smash Ultimate is that shields are, uh, well, like every move in the almost every move in the game is going to be negative on shield. The options you have to oh, respond yeah. whenever you're in shield are slow. Um, oh. So, like if you if you're if you're shielding. And you go from releasing shield to try to just like do something afterwards. Like say you're Roy, you want to hard punish something, so you just let go of shield. We often call that shield dropping, and then F smash afterwards. Uh, yeah. It's you, it's not that entire sequence does not just take the startup of your F smash because you need to go from holding shield to back to neutral, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can calculate that 
with the understanding of the frame data of how long it takes us to go from full shield to not shielding at all. Um, that, in this game, is really slow. It takes 11 frames to go from shielding to just not shielding at all, if you just release the shield button. Mm -hmm. So if you want to Roy F smash punish something, the, you, you can calculate that by saying 11 plus the startup of F smash. So startup of F smash is 13. So it takes a total of 24 frames to go from shielding something to letting go of shield to F smashing. Okay. So that's pretty slow, right? Like that's definitely not gonna fit in the minus nine window of like Lucina Downer, not even like Lucina Forward tilt minus 15. It has to be okay. really punishable for you to be able to fit that in. And there, that's, that's worth knowing as Roy and Kron because their forward smashes are really hard punishes. Um, and so you can like think about that in terms of like, that's your hard punish window. Like if anything is minus, twi minus 25 or worse, then you can have smash yeah. that. So you can look through your opponent's yeah. frame data and be like, okay, Lucina Forward smash minus 31, that's F smashable. Lucina dash oh. attack, minus 21. That's not F smashable. Up smash, mm -hmm. minus 41. You, you F smash that. Down smash, mi minus 24. You F smash that. Well, that that one's like kind of hard, right? Because that's like a frame perfect window. Usually I try to give like a couple frames of leeway for like a hard punish like F smash. Just because, mm -hmm. you know, there's no guarantee you'll react frame perfectly in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but that's like, that. That's a, that's a kind of an edge case. Because generally Roy won't want to punish with, with F smash because it's just too slow. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are other options we have out of shield, obviously, and much faster options than just letting go of shield completely. The, um, mm -hmm. We can go directly into shield grab from shield, so we just press the A button and then we grab. Um, mm -hmm. There's actually an odd property in Smash Ultimate, however, where if you try mm -hmm. to shield grab after you're in shield's done, there's a four frame delay on the grab coming out. Right. Yeah. So if you so for Roy, for example, his grab is frame seven. So if he tries mm -hmm. to shield grab in response to something, something hitting his shield, it's effectively a frame 11 response. So anything that's frame 11, minus 11 or worse, is a free shield grab. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like I mentioned, like Lucina forward tilt is minus 14. So if she does it, or minus 15 rather, if she does it and she's in range of your shield grab, then you can just shield grab her. It's just free. There's nothing she mm -hmm. can do about it. She's stuck in that animation. Yep. But she has to be close enough. Mm -hmm. um, and there's lots of moves, like, whenever you get into moves that are, like, minus four, you know, shield grab won't punish that, right? That's one of the reasons why shield grabbing is worse in this game than it was in Smash Smash 4, if you played Smash 4 at all, is because Smash... No. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, you, you, may, you may have heard people talk about that, like old Smash 4 veterans, how, like, shield grabbing is bad in this game. In Smash 4, they didn't have that four-frame delay, so almost anything close to range was shield grabbable, if your character had a decent grab. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very clearly something they put in this game to make it so shield grabs just aren't as all-encompassing as a response and punish. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, four frame delay on shield drop uh, on, on shield grab rather. Uh, we can also jump out of shield. So mm -hmm. you you can go from shield and then just immediately jump and then immediately do an aerial. Um, the there's a universal three frame jump squat in this game for all characters. So we can calculate that response with. Three, for three plus whatever the startup of our aerial is. So, for example, mm -hmm. right, neutral air. Right, neutral air is a really good out of shield option because neutral air comes out in frame six. So, mm -hmm. add three to that, frame nine. It's a frame nine response that like has pretty decent range. It'll it'll whiff against characters that are really low to the ground, so you won't be able to like, hit like you won't be able to punish like Pikachu doing stuff on your shield with this move. But yeah. if it's a character like Lucina and she's like poking at you with like forward tilts or up tilts, you can just neutral air out of shield. And then mm -hmm. the nice part about neutral air is that it's less committal than a grab. So if you try to like, if you try to shield grab an opponent, you're stuck in that, anima at that animation for a really long time and you can't move. So if you like, if you try to shield grab Lucina forward tilt and you're not in range, you might just like get half smash. Um, versus something like neutral air, you can neutral air out of shield and then just like drift away. So mm -hmm. if it does hit, then you know, you, you tip neutral air them and then you reset back to neutral. If it doesn't hit, you tip neutral air their shield. And then like, you'll probably be safe afterwards. Mm -hmm. Um, up B, so the that's that's aerials out of shield. A lot of characters fastest out of shield out of shield options will be their aerials, just because a lot of characters have really really fast aerials. Um, but also the one final part of that is that up smashes and up Bs, you can just do immediately out of shield. There's just no delay at all. You just do them. Uh, so cloud, um, that's why like game and watch up B, cloud up B. That's why they're so good is because there's no additional things you need to add onto that. They're just the response is their startup. So Game & Watch up B is frame three, and he just instantly does it. So it's a frame three response. Um, Roy up B is frame nine. 
which is pretty fast. Nine, I found like nine and like once once you're like ten or less, you can generally like generally moves that are punishable. You'll be able to use that response to punish things. And right up B is frame nine. So if anyone ever does anything close range, and it's punishable, up B is like a bit more of a committal punish than neutral air, but it'll hit characters that are lower to the ground, um, and there's like it'll kill at high percents. So it's 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 a good response to consider. You know, even before thinking about the armor on it for like breaking through strings. Um, mm -hmm. So like Lucina down down air is minus nine. So if I did down air and like landed immediately next to you inside the range of up B, you could up B and punish it. Mm -hmm. So all this is really, really important because it's important to conceptualize what you can do in neutral that's safe. Um, because if you're not attacking your opponent in an unsafe way, then they can just kind of like hang back, chill, wait for you to do something unsafe and then punish you for it. Um, which is a lot of what I was doing that game. It was just like letting you move at me and then just like either swatting at you as you were like entering into my space or like mm -hmm. shielding and then neutral airing or up being at the right time to to like punish what it was that you were trying to do yep the uh, there's an important thing to understand about aerials on shield um and i can actually jump in the game really quick to show you what i'm talking about for this for ultimate okay. frame data for the listings on frame data for like like roy ford air for example is like his safest aerial um, it's minus four on shield, but it's only minus four on shield Three, if you're hitting your two, opponent's shield one, the frame go. before you're hitting the ground. So, like, if you're so the the like best case for air for Roy is if he's doing it like super low to the ground. So, if you're doing one that's like higher up and like falling with it, you're going to be hitting your opponent's shield higher up in the air, and you have to go through all of those frames of falling down before you're touching the ground, before you're actually going through the end leg of the aerial, and so that will be much, much less safe. So, uh, whenever you're doing, there's a little bit of a difference between like a forward air to just like cover space and just like hit your opponent moving around, versus a forward air that you're trying to use to like pressure your opponent. Um, mm -hmm. Which is a really important thing to understand because if you're like, if you're forward airing, if you're doing like full hop forward airs, like doing it early and just landing on your opponent, that's why I was able to shield grab some of your forward airs. It's because I just shielded it whenever it came high and then just responded. Um, yep. That's an important thing to understand for Roy. And like, he generally wants to be putting his forward airs low anyways because that's when he can combo off of them. Like against a, a floatier character like Lucina, at 0%, he can get forward air, a really low forward air, into like dash forward neutral air. And then he can string new Lucina literally across the entire stage. Um, and even against, like, characters that aren't as floaty, he can get forward air into, like, dash forward jab. That's just 100% a true combo, even at zero, which is kind of crazy. Or, like, dash and grab and, like, down throw up air. Um, he gets better reward off of it if it's lower to the ground, and it's also safer. So, generally, that's how you want to create your forward airs. Um, I can actually... About some stuff. Roy. stuff. The um, so there, there are two other main topics for us to talk about, which is um, one would be like Roy's burst movement range and what his tools are to use those burst movement in neutral. Um, and I can jump into the game as well to have a little bit of a visual, so that's a little bit easier for me to. Show you what I'm talking about. Choose your fighter, Roy. Let's go to a flat stage. Ready? So, thinking about those tools, like obviously thinking about right forward air. You know, it combos on hit. It's super, super safe. It's like our best case scenario approach, right? That's what we, the situation we want to create, where we're like we're forwarding people low to the ground. So we want to think about how we actually apply this, because if we're if you're playing against someone in neutral and you're like standing across the other side of the stage and you just like run at them, like opponents, like that's not going to work, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to think about why that is. The um, a lot of it ties down into like reaction time. So if you're charging at an opponent, like moving really far. Mm -hmm. What they're going to be watching you in neutral and seeing what it is that you're doing. Um, so, like, that movement of you running at them is a big tell that you're approaching them, right? And Roy's a fast character. He's, like, he's he's tricky to react to, but if you're moving from too far away, then it's pretty easy for them to see that you're coming, right? And they have a general idea of what you might be doing, because you're right. Like, you want to be forward. Right? So it's, not, it's not exactly a secret. Um, so we want to think about how we can set up these forward airs so that it's not reactable, because that is possible. And the way that we want to think about that is with the idea of burst movement. So, like, if we're back, if I'm back here and I run at you and I forward air, it's pretty reactable. 
If I'm right here, then I do that. That's a lot harder to react to. Because I'm instantly running, instantly like short hopping, and like falling with those people. It's like it's there's a little bit more delay to left 40 if you're like if you're doing it low to the ground. So it's not going to beat like all approaches, but it makes it harder for your opponent to have an idea of what you're doing if you're using your movement in this sort of way. You want to think about movement in neutral in basically as small a spaces as possible. Because if we're like if we're moving around too wide, then it becomes too obvious that you're trying to set up your forehead. But if you're moving with tight, small distances, like at any point in time during this, I could be flying at you, right? And that's really scary. Even better than... So the, the forward air is how he'll generally want to, like, approach safely. Um, his neutral air, honestly, is an even better burst movement tool because he doesn't have to wait to be falling in his short hop. So, like, for forward air, you want to, like... You want you want it to hit low to the ground so that it combos better instead of safer. Neutral air is a tool that will still combo if he just hits an approach with it less. He still gets lots of damage off of it. It's less safe, but it's still an important tool because, like, from this distance, it's it's a it's a faster burst movement tool. So at any point in time, like, if you're playing if you're playing against a character that can get hit by rising neutral air, which is going to be most characters in the game, any character that's like a human shaped bipedal character, you can just like fly, through. and that that's not possible to react to. It's just not humanly capable. Like people just aren't capable of it. <laughs> so understanding this tool is really 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 important. The the it, there's like. People like to think of Roy as like a masher character, right? Like a character with like really safe buttons who just like you know does crazy stuff and just press buttons all the time. But if you're doing that, you're leaving opportunity, you're leaving windows where your opponent can hit you. Whereas if you're just like moving around and waiting for the right time to neutral at someone, like there's no there's no position in here where like where I'm moving around where you can just hit me. And if you tried to hit me and didn't do it in a safe way, then I just neutral area. Mm -hmm. So this is a really 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 important concept for the character for neutral is. He, he can press buttons, and he has safe ways to attack opponents, but he still doesn't necessarily want to force interactions. He wants to look for the right time to either intercept his opponent with neutral air, set up for a safe forward air, or just avoid the ability for his opponent to hit him. Because other characters have different burst movement ranges, right? Like, Lucina is a slower character than Roy, so she'll be able to like dance around him a little bit, but she's got like a little bit bigger of a threat zone because her sword is longer and hits harder at the tip. So she has like... Basically, like her, her like instant rising forward air for Lucina is like a really really important threat zone for the character because if you're ever like jumping around in that space, you just go nah, stop it, and then you know you get knocked off stage and you take the and she has control of the pace of the game. So as Roy, the objective becomes like dancing around that space. Like if, imagine like, if you're like Lucina right now, where I want to be dance, dash dancing around the space where the forward air would be hitting me if she like does an instant rising forward air, and if she ever tries to do it and misses, then. And if she sits back and, like, tries to reposition, then it becomes about, like, setting up forward air if she's trying to move forward or, like, chasing into her space to try to push her to the corner so I can set up the forward air. And doing my best to not let her move too far forward while also not being inside that space where she can forward air me for free. Mm -hmm. So this is a really, really important for Roy especially. There's a lot of matchups... There's a decent number of matchups where Roy can like bully his opponent with his hitbox because he doesn't have a sword and he's really fast and he's like got a strong combo game and he hits hard. But there are also a lot of characters that have even bigger hitboxes than Roy and he can't bully them with his hitboxes or you like if he can't neutral air a character while rising, then like he needs to play a little bit more defensive because it's like his interrupt tools aren't as strong and so he needs to rely a lot more on movement to put himself into strong positions. Yeah. So that's something that like. Will take some practice and like understanding how to move around is really really important. Okay. But that's like the biggest thing I could tell you for neutral is you don't need to press buttons to win neutral. You can just like take your time and dash dance around and wait for the right time to use your tools. Does that make sense? Yep. So patience is key. Yes, patience is very very key. Where I can rush people down, but. The right. it's it's very you want to be any any time that you're trying to be aggressive you want to be looking for a target point for what you're hitting your opponent during right so like we were talking about like if you're playing against Lucina and you're just like dash dancing around if she right. ever does forward air that's a target point where you just, aha I win. And, so one thing I do mm -hmm. want to ask about Roy is Absolutely. killing. Well, yeah. Obviously Roy has kill power. Mm -hmm. So like I said I'm a Chrome and you know. During that second stock, I couldn't kill you up until like 180 because I keep on getting sour spots. Mm -hmm. So normally with Chrome, you have to jab back here mm -hmm. and you have like, you just back here out of still by like out of five times that I like hit the back here, I got sour spots. Mm -hmm. And that's how you live to 180. 
So like, yeah. any of that, so like, specifically Roy gain that sweet spot. Absolutely. The, um, a lot of that is based on movement. The, um, it's important for Roy to position so that he can be doing the sweet spot. So like, obviously, like we were talking about with like the first move, like the forward air. Um, if you're trying to set up a two forward air from too far away, like if I want to be like moving it at you really fast, like right here, I just can't right. sweet spot forward air, right? Um, so that becomes like a positioning issue of like to set up for my forward air. I want to be here right. instead because now, now I can sweet spot. Um, what about out of show sweet spot? Does that work with Roy? A little bit. It's like he doesn't have much. Like the, his back air is like a little bit inconsistent for out of shield options. If opponents are like, it's still a fast out of shield option. I mean, if opponents are like tall and they're close, then like he can get a sweet spot back air out of shield. But it's not going to be anywhere near as consistent as Krom's. Um, okay. So it's it's still a good thing to look for. But it's right. if opponents are spacing appropriately against right, then like he'll he'll get the tip back air and he'll get momentum from it and he'll like push his opponents to the ledge and get the chance to ledge trap them. But he's not going to kill them off of it directly like Krom. Which is um, kind of like a bit of the overall gist between the two characters is that Krom will kill more consistently. But Roy's got like a little bit more explosive kill. Krom doesn't have the Roy side B, so sometimes Roy will side B you when you're at 70%, and that's just the end of your stock. Uh, but he does uh -huh. need to hit a sweet spot to end your stock, so sometimes you will get into those times where your opponent is, especially if it's like a smaller character like Pikachu or Pichu that are like hard to hit with the sweet spot. Sometimes your opponent just lifts 180%, and that's that's not like that can be frustrating in the moment. But the important thing to understand is that it's not necessarily the worst deal because of the fact that you will make up for that like in potential future stocks when you take low percent stocks with side B, and you still have good options to end stocks at those percents. Right up, right up there is actually pretty strong. So usually what I'll be doing whenever opponents get to like 1, 160 um, is like start spacing safe aerials with like forward air and back air. Those moves will kill uh, just raw, and they're also pretty safe, so we can kind of throw them around. And if opponents aren't getting hit by those at 180% up there, we'll start killing. So the... It's it's a little bit trickier than Krom because he can't just like space tip aerials, right? But he still doesn't need to necessarily force the kill. He has decent options to finish stocks off safely at a higher percent if he doesn't find that position where he can get the super low percent stock. Yep. Yeah, and the um, the one of the reasons why that's so important too is like if he tr does try to force the kill, like forward tilt obviously is a good kill option. Up tilt's a pretty good kill option too, but they're not really safe. So if you're trying to force them in situations where they won't work, then that's going to leave opportunities for your opponent to punish and put more damage on you, and then you're going to be even further behind. Whereas if you're just like played safe and like used down tilts and forwarders, and racked your opponent's percent up more, kept stage control, and then just up throw them at 180. Yep. Okay. That was a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah. uh, and obviously, the, this is stuff that'll like. This is stuff that takes a long time. Like. A long time to implement and like really thinking about how you're I, the one of the things i recommend for like for training mode is anytime you're practicing your combos whether it be like forward air or like neutral air stuff or like even down throw stuff um treat like kind of shadow boxing whenever you're doing it what i mean by that is like setting up a situation where like you're not like obviously it's pretty easy to just like you know run forward grab your opponent down throw them neutral them but you want to think about how you would actually, what range you would want to be at when doing that inside an actual game. Same thing for like forward air and neutral air, what like your burst movement range is for that. And so you want to like dash dance around and like pretend like your opponent is doing something, right? Even though it's just obviously like a CPU opponent who's just standing there doing nothing. Um, the idea right. is to like start building up the, um, the idea of like looking for that range when you're in the right space to set up for your nair approach, your forward air approach, your run in approach, and then start yeah. your combo off of that. Okay. Okay, so let's hop into some games. I can show you kind of a bit more what I'm talking about too, um, because Lucina is a character. Uh, Palutena is a character who's like very, very. She's got good neutral, but it's not like really oppressive, right? Her forward air is safe, but it's not a huge hitbox, so she needs to dance around a lot. And do you think by the end of this, I can also see a voice? I can know like some of the options you chose. Absolutely, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So like for this matchup, for the seat for Palutena, I want to be in this range where. I'm like short hopping at you before. And if I'm not doing that, then I'm gonna be keeping you out. I like that dancing. Okay. You're good. Just playing around those tricks.
So you want to be really careful in those sort of situations um, to yeah. stop for a second, where, like, if I hit your shield with something safe, so, like, shield, for, like, forward air, for example, if I forward air your shield, you want to be really careful about jumping at me afterwards. Because if I do that, like, I'm my entire purpose here with, like, doing the forward air and then dashing, and Roy can do the same thing, where I'm, right. like, forward airing your shield and then dashing back here, is I want you to try and jump at me. Because I right. know that you can't catch me because my move is just so safe, right? Sometimes I throw out a F smash and I know that it doesn't punish uh mm -hmm. it doesn't punish forward airs, but it's actually kind of a habit I got from prom. I don't know if it's good. Where sometimes mm -hmm. it's like you try to space out your forward air and you accidentally like miss, then my F smash connects. Yeah, it's it's a little better with Krom since he like has the wider right. range of like where the F smash works at. It's like it can be okay with Roy, but it's usually more of like a niche thing. Um Right. But yeah, in this sort of situation, whenever like your opponent has set up a situation where, like, they've hit yourself, hit your shield with something safe and, like, moved back. Right. Um, I just then moved back a little bit and they missed, completely missed me, and then, like, I F smash. Uh, with Roy, that never works because it's always yeah. summer spawn. And it's, like, it's a pretty dangerous thing to do with Krom, too. It, like, it can work, but it's still very, very committal. So if it doesn't work, again, like, you've effectively lost neutral at that point, right? If you swing with the F smash and it doesn't hit. Um,. You'll find yourself in this situation at some point in time in matches against good players. Like, they will find situations to, like, set up safe areas on your shield. The important right. thing to is to, like, conceptualize when they're safe whenever they set these things up. Like, you like you, just, you can, like, look at a character and be like, okay, Palutena 4 is super safe, so I have to respect it. And basically prepare for ahead of time if, like, Lucina ever does this move, Palutena ever does this move on your shield, to just back up afterwards. The... If you try to chase me and try to fight, that just that that's really really creates a situation where it's really easy for me to whiff punish you. If you do press the oh. immediate button, then you're like, I have so many different tools to punish those. You're not going to be able to hit me from the distance that we're at. And if you, you right. can like you can try to overshoot and like set up for like a, a deep forward air to try and like steal a turn, but even then like I I still have the opportunity of like punishing that and like keeping you out of my space. The the fact that I set up a safe move on your shield gives me a lot of control of my own space. So in those okay. situations it's better to just, like, disengage. Whether okay. that be, like, short hop out of shield, whether that be, like, drop shield, dash back, if you're, like, you can roll away in those sort of situations. Um, it's yeah. important to understand that you don't need to try to punish everything that your opponent does. You can, in, the big part of neutral is learning to just disengage from situations that aren't good and just go back to positioning and try to find a better position to fight from. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, thank awesome. you. Absolutely. Right there, that's basically what I was doing. I don't have great options to punish your dab on shield as, as Palutena, so I just disengaged, moved back to the platform. Really safe way for me to move away from him. And then just see what you're doing from there. And once you have whipped out the dash, then the opportunity for me to move. Yeah. 
<laughs> right through the talking phone. There it goes. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, I have a quest about Saibi because um, <laughs> voice Saibi is a crazy troll. Yes. Uh, does what? Like, how do you say? It? How do I get you like? It actually sweet spots because I know that sometimes you know you go up on the mm -hmm. third one, but I have yeah. a lot of di di out of it like, or jump sure, out of sure, it when you do it one two up. So there's something. there's a lot that well it's simple and, and it's not. <laughs> uh, yeah, the in general there there so, so the um, an important thing to understand is that there is a spacing where you can be hitting with like the farther out edge of the first hit of side B, and there's just right. no way for you to sweet spot. Some okay. especially whenever opponents get to higher percent, it doesn't have set knockback. So if opponents mm -hmm. are at like 150, it's actually it sweet spots less consistently than they're if they're at 50 percent. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's why like Roy's will generally like go for that window if if opponents are at from like around like 60 to like 120 percent, they'll go for the side B. After that point in time, they'll usually go for more forward tilts or like forward airs and that sort of thing. Why do some Roy's go for like side B down? What does side B down actually do? Side B down does more damage. So if you're hitting your opponents at lower percent, so like um, jab into side B is a true combo at zero. Uh, if you're if you're at that point in time, like you're obviously not going to kill your opponent, right? Um, so right. if if you can land the down B the 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 the, the, the down stabs finisher it does do more uh -huh. overall damage can set up for some tech chases too. Um, okay. An important thing to understand about that is that it's um, it is important that you sweet spot the down stabs at low percent because if you okay. tip if you if at zero percent you do like jab and then sad B finish with down stabs and it tips Roy's actually negative afterwards. Okay. So like you could like then then you lose your turn. <laughs> like, but opponents okay. could potentially punish you if they're like they're ready for it and depending on the situation. Um, so the spacing of it is important, but it does do more damage. Okay. And it sends at a lower angle, so like sometimes the situation afterwards is better. Um, similarly, you might see some Roy's if they're like underneath a platform and it and their opponents are at lower percent, they'll end in the up finisher just so that it push, puts opponents up onto platforms where you can like shark them with up air. Um, yep. Yeah. So. At the, the basic bread and butter of when you want to be using it. You want to be using the, the side finisher to end opponent's stocks, down finisher to put on damage, up finisher to put them like up onto platforms. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, let me get the right hand. Ready? Is green your favorite color? Um, I'm not sure if it is now, but it used to be. Uh, I still like the color, but I don't know if it's quite up there with my favorite yet anymore. But I do like green. Two, a nice color. One, go! Yes. Ooh. Do you want to try it? Just... Ah, that's okay. No. Ain't gonna be <laughs> yeah, that was good music. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh no, the footstool. Oh no! <laughs> I that. That's okay. Oh. I was just like, recover high, recover high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good idea. Recovering high in general. Yeah, I think you could see how I'm like, what I'm talking about with like how I'm there moving around. Way, like, yeah, around. yeah. I'm just getting hard hits. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just like, full smash. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're getting random hits that are harder. Um, right. But like, you're comboing me to like that solid mm -hmm. board. 50%, and yeah, and that like that boils down to like me having a really clear idea of what exactly it is I'm looking at whenever I'm playing neutral right. and low yeah, percent. Not, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. like the the falling forward air, the, like the rising neutral air grab. I know all of those put on lots of damage, so I'm really focusing on like moving around and positioning myself to set up for those. Mm -hmm. Ready? <laughs> yeah, I see there. I actually had to back up because I got to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was a little oh, no. ridiculous. The rolling obviously has a good amount of invulnerability, but there, the neutral was too far back. Yeah, I think if you do go back and uh, rewatch the set, I think that game would be a really good one to watch. But, um, yeah. To pay attention to my positioning. I'm just like staying outside of your range the entire time, and not even necessarily attacking you from that range, but just waiting for the right opportunity where I can guarantee right. that I'll hit you. I, I tried to go like... So like I saw you were being patient and punishing me, and mm -hmm. then halfway through I tried to do the same thing, but I was already stopped. Down. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Go! It's hard to do it whenever your opponent has a weight like that. Yeah. <laughs> 
too high. Yeah, that's one wow. thing that is definitely worth talking about for right, is that no. I think the best way to think about edge guarding is a similar way to like how I'm talking about thinking about neutral, where you want to like position yourself and see where your opponents are vulnerable. Um, yep. In general, for edge guarding, but especially important for Roy, because Roy's offstage edge guarding is not very good. Partially because of that, because like he's just. Exactly. Like yeah, like his vertical recovery is just not very good. The, um, yep. On top of that, his like his aerials also don't come out super fast compared mm -hmm. to a character like Lucina. Um, so if you're like if you're going off stage to try and attack somebody with right forward air, it gives them more time to react versus mm -hmm. a character like Lucina versus a character like Joker back air. Um, so the likelihood of them being able to maneuver around it, they have a wider window to counterplay it than a faster area. Mm -hmm. So the way that's generally best to think that's not to say that Roy can't go off stage in edge guard because like I mean like I did it to you like a couple times in, in the day right. already right the way to think about it is like whenever your opponent is vulnerable so if they still right. have their double jump if they still have their air dodge you probably can't hit them off stage unless you're like hard calling out a very specific vulnerable option like Falco Fox side B is a good example where like if you're sure they're gonna side B to the ledge you can like jump off stage and forward air that right. Um, but if it's a character, even like in the ditto, if if your opponent still has their double jump, it's going to be really hard to actually hit them out sta off stage, just because as you're positioning to try and edge guard them, they can counter position and try to move around you. Right. And it's hard for Roy because of the fact that he's not he's, he falls really fast, and because his vertical recovery isn't very good, he's not going to be able to set up those situations where he can like checkmate them with his aerials, right? Because he just can't yeah. go art out far enough to guarantee that to happen. Um, mm -hmm. so the onstage, like, ledge trapping is the best, like, go-to for the character, um, which honestly mm -hmm. we could do an entire session on just by itself. It's a pretty deep thing. In general, you want, the idea is to, like, you want to keep control of center stage, and you want to use right. stuff at ledge trap. Like, obviously, side B for ledge trapping is extraordinarily good, because if you hit them with the S65, their stock is just gone. Um, yeah. but in general, the goal should be just to hold stage to make it so that your opponent can't get back to neutral, so they can't set up that positioning for their actual own burst movement. Um... Because okay. if, like, in because that sort of situation where, like, I've got you in the corner and I'm, like, neutral airing your shield at, like, tip distance and, like, down tilting at your shield and, like, backing up, that gives you room to move around, but not enough to actually, like, we still engage on my terms, right? So I can position around your stuff and then just respond accordingly afterwards, which is a position mm -hmm. that's really hard to deal with. I'm not likely to kill you off of, like, any given interaction in that situation or even, like, three or four interactions, but I'll put on a ton of damage because of yeah. the fact that you just need to, like, you need to take risks to take space back. 
Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that should be the general game plan for Roy. If they ever don't have their air dodge, if they ever don't have their double jump, or they have to like air dodge from off stage to try and gain distance, that's a position where Roy can intercept off stage with forward air. Um, the like yep. the, the time that game, whenever I like I back aired you, whenever we were off stage, it's because I saw that you didn't have your double jump because I caught you with neutral air before your air dodge actually hit the ground. So I knew that you couldn't double jump over it, and mm -hmm. air dodging there, you know, pretty risky situation. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that that's an important thing for red guarding in general, but especially for right because yeah, if he he like he can two frame back air some people or like back air them like as they're recovering, but the the risk for that is like pretty high because if you get reversaled somehow, like if you try that against Joker and he has he has like Arsene, he's just gonna drop like drop from the legend counter you right like you're just you're actually your stock is just gone, <laughs> um, and even if you don't get reversaled, your opponent is still going to get back to the stage faster than you are, so you give up a position. Where where you could be ledge trapping them and are instead being ledge trapped yourself. Um, yep. Tempting to go for in those positions whenever like you're really behind and your opponent's at a high percent, but even then, oftentimes it's best to play safe and play tight and uh, try to force your opponent to make a mistake that you can punish with a KO. Yep. Uh, which is a bit another thing we could talk about a little bit for that game. One of the reasons why like the F smashes um, weren't really working. Then, yeah. Yeah. The. Uh, F smashing like in neutral as Krom and Roy, but you know as Krom again, it's like it's a little bit better because it's got more threat range. But even as Krom, the because of the fact that it's a relatively slow move, the it's yeah. effectively like like going all in, right? Like you're saying, like I I'm, I'm guessing that you're gonna do something here that I can F smash, and I mm -hmm. hope it works because if it doesn't work, then like like I F smashed you, right? For yeah. for the F smash, so you want to create like. It's good to think about how you can use those moves because those moves are really good. And hitting Roy like deep sweet spot F smash is one of the best feelings in the game, in my opinion. Like stocks yeah. just absolutely go nuclear. Um, but you want to try to create situations where it's possible to react to what you're doing, what your opponent's doing. So like the idea that you had of like side B one two my shield and then like F smash me if I roll, like F smash mm -hmm. the other way so it catches my roll. Like that's a good idea. But the better way to do it to keep yourself safe is to side B, one, two, my shield, and then wait. And then watch really, really closely. And then uh -huh. if I roll, then you F smash. But don't pull the trigger on it That'd until you awesome. see exactly. Like, react to the roll itself. And you could do the same thing, like, if I spot dodge, right? Or if, like, if I roll away, you could chase me and, like, dashing side B that. Um, mm -hmm. So well, it's... It, don't overcome exactly. Yeah, like, the... You can create those situations where you can, like, prep the idea of using that move and not actually, like, play that card until you see the cue that you're looking for. And that makes it yeah. a lot safer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're coming up on the hour mark here. Do you have uh -huh. any final questions, stuff for us to talk about before you wrap up? Uh, not really. Okay. Uh, what are Roy's best stage? Um, it's a little bit matchup dependent, but Town and City is generally a really good stage for him. Um, my, <laughs> so I think my record is uh, twenty eight percent. I've killed a person with side B on the platform um, okay. in one of the transformations of Town and City. <laughs> so, uh, like, even without the platforms, like, I've killed Charizard at 69% after the side B finished. Um, okay. So because of the fact that that stage is such a wide base stage and the blast zones are relatively close to the side, Roy can absolutely rob people on that stage. Um, so that's a pretty good stage for him. And, like, he generally likes a little bit more, like, kind of some room, room, room to run around with like well, on a longer stage like that he can nair string people for a really long time and like he plays pretty well with the platforms um so town and city one of his best stages um okay. a, after that like some matchups he might not necessarily want town and city depending on like how comfortable you are in it like a character like rob will also you know rob you right back with side b with his side b on that stage he'll kill you at like literally zero percent if he hits you with side b <laughs> whenever you're like on the ledge um so depending on your comfortability in the matchup you may not necessarily want to pick it and it is like you know, it does chance. It, it does have periods where it's basically FD. So if, if it's a character like Joker or Diddy Kong, who's really good on a flat stage, um, mm -hmm. you might not necessarily want it. But it's generally Roy's go-to counter pick. The okay. I also really like Yoshi's Story and Small Battlefield um, stages that are like again. It's like a little matchup dependent on the, like depending on the opponent. But like the smaller stages are usually pretty good for the character because his burst movement range is so big, right? For neutral air. So, like, if you're standing at the very center of small battlefield, then, like, your opponent can't really be anywhere and be safe because he can move so far. Same idea with Smashville. Roy can use the, the, the platform on Smashville as, like, a booster platform where he can, like, jump up on it and then just run off of it and fall with forward air, and he can threaten literally the entire stage with that. Um, so that's pretty scary. All right. Those three stages, I think, are generally his best stages. Yeah.
thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, good thing. I've seen you. I've seen a lot of your sets in the past when I first started playing the game. Okay. A year and a half. Cool, cool. And then I was like, yeah, this this guy is he had played some crazy Roy, and you also made a lot of these like you made it onto like a lot of these crazy combo videos. And oh yeah. Oh yeah. Especially, and then like I saw especially. you, and I was like, yeah. Maybe I'd give it a shot. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I've actually been uh, been focusing on coaching. Well, I obviously played the game a lot myself. I still love the game. I've been playing a lot of Sephiroth yeah. lately, too. Um, but I've actually been focusing on coaching full-time for, like, the past three years. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's, that's why you, like, see a little bit less of me in, like, competitions and, like, combo videos and stuff. Because, like, I've been right. focusing on competition myself. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've been coaching for quite a while, so. <laughs> Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, you're extraordinarily welcome. The, um, yeah, as a reminder, this has all been recorded. I'll actually go ahead yep. and clip that now.